you that came today. Thank you. We got people everywhere. What? 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 Man, we're so glad to have you. My sermon today is called Surviving Silence. Don't y'all hate them? Ooh. Surviving silence. When you are praying and prophesying and fasting and you've been praying forever, have you ever been in those seasons where you can't hear nothing? Nada? You ever been, anybody here? Like God's been on vacation. All y'all should be lifting your hand because we all gone through some seasons, all right? <laughs> Well, I'm going to have to get me another mic, and we're going to go ahead. We've had so many distractions today, but devil, you are a liar. You are a punk, and we're going to get through this, and y'all going to get delivered. Ta, 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 ta. Y'all about to get, say, I'm about to get delivered. I'm about to lay everything down. I'm not going to carry anything home. Jesus, I thank you for this word. I thank you right now, Father, that every person that walked into this place, Father, that whatever they're carrying today, anything that has been holding them hostage, anything that's making them feel stuck, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come against every demonic spirit. Lord, you said in John 10, 10, that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But right now, we put our foot on his neck, and we take back everything the devil stole. And we take it back. 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 We take back our peace. We take back our joy. We take back our finances. We take back our relationships. We take back our sleep. We take back it. We take it back. We will not get weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So, Father, right now, in the Spirit, we are getting our backs that have been busted, disgusted, and bent over. And we're coming back in the Spirit. Now, what we don't do in this church is stare at me. I'm going to need you to be an active participant. At because one thing I know is when you're in a season of silence, you better know how to put some praise on it. You better know how to tell God, God, even if I can't see you, I'm gonna still worship you. I'm gonna worship you. I'm gonna worship you. I'm gonna worship you. I'm gonna praise you. I'm gonna praise you. I'm gonna praise you until something happens, until something moves, until something happens, until something moves. Wow! There's a power breaking in this room. There's a breaker anointing in this room. I don't know what you walked in with today, but I do know that there's a breaker anointing in this room. And whatever you need, it's right here in this atmosphere. Grab a hold. Have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way in this place. I tell you one thing, I would never want to go to a church where I can't walk out of here feeling like Popeye's spinach was just downloaded on the inside of me, which is the Holy Ghost. Ah, 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 ah. What happens? What happens? What happens? What happens when you've been praying? I'll tell you something. Nothing changes until something changes. Some of y'all been on mute. Some of you ain't opened your mouth in forever. And the Bible says that life and death are in the power of your words. You better know how to put some fire on your situation. Put some fire on your children's situation. Put some fire. You better know how to open your mouth and put some power. I'm not going to quit talking until you come through, God. 
There's some of you just got your breakthrough and I ain't even preached. You know why? Because you're going after it. Because you're, hey, you're going after it. For all of you that this is making you uncomfortable, I'm sorry. But we are a lit church. Because we've all been to hell and came out on fire. We've all got a story to tell. When the life we thought would be over, we made it out. You can be seated. I preach all over the world. I will be literally on two, four, six, eight, ten, ten planes this week. Uh huh. I've been praying for my daddy to be healed, and I ain't seeing nothing. I've been praying, I prophesy, I preach, my tail off, I see miracles take place, and my own father has dementia and has to leave because of his bad behavior. Where's God? Where's God? I can, I can, I can watch healings take place, but where's God? What am I going to do in a season like this? When I'm seeing my father down spiraling, he looks like a million bucks on the outside, but a little boy on the inside. What am I going to do? I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep worshiping. I'm not going to get defeated. I'm going to see a miracle. 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 You better know how to get mad at the devil. You better stop letting him punk your family. You got to get mad. You got to get mad at the devil for picking on your family. You got to get mad at the devil for taking your marriage. You got to get mad at the devil for making you bipolar. You got to get mad at the devil for messing with your children. You better, you better, you better learn how to open your mouth. Devil, you are a punk. You are a punk messing with our families. Messing with our finances, messing with our sleep, messing with our peace. Go back to hell where you belong. Sometimes life can seem so unfair. You know what's so great? I'm watching him pick on my family, but you know why? Because I'm ripping people out of hell every day of my life. He should have messed with somebody else. Because I ain't scared of no punk devil. You hear me? Bring it on. Bring it on. We're talking about the Canaanite woman today. Her child was filled with demons. She went after God and heard what? I need y'all to talk to me. She heard nothing. Left her community, left her neighborhoods. She said, I'm going after God and I'm going to keep on messing with him until he comes through. See, some of you just walked in this room today just to get your supercharged. Somebody came in this room today that was ready to throw in the towel. Somebody walked in this room today that wanted to literally kill themselves. There's somebody that walked in the room today that don't know how you're going to pay your bills. There's somebody in this room today with cancer. But God said that as the moment you walk out of this place, you're going to feel a victory. Down in your bones, you're going to feel victory. Down in your bones. Sometimes life can seem so unfair. It is so frustrating to be put on hold by God when you have a burning question or desperately need a move in your life. It is almost like calling a business but constantly getting a recording that said, all lines are busy. It is so frustrating when you want to move on in your life or have God answer that important question but he puts you on hold. When we pray for God to guide us, Sometimes a simple yes or a no would be great, but to be put on hold by God seems so unfair. We should remember, though, that even in the, even in the Bible, the hero such as Joseph was even put on hold in prison. Where you're at right now, on hold. God's going to use your holding position 
to move you from the basement to the penthouse. That's why you can't quit when you don't want to pray anymore, when you're mad at God because he didn't heal that relationship, when you're mad at God that he didn't heal that cancer, and now you got to do chemotherapy. I'm going to tell you something. you got to get to a place in your life where you know how to turn up the heat, and you know how to get louder and more obnoxious. I'm sitting there dealing with my father's situation right there and having to hold it together for all y'all. What you going to do when the whole world's coming for you? And you got to still get up and preach. Can you still carry out what God's called you to do even when you're going through hell? When you're walking through a divorce and got to keep it together for your children. When you're walking through bankruptcy. When they come and get your car and you got to start taking Uber everywhere. Are you still going to know how to praise your way out? Matthew 15, 21 and 28. It's my scripture today. Have you ever had a problem that wore you out? A problem that got so big you can't handle this. I can't cover it. That's what's happened to this Greek woman in the Bible. Her daughter was vexed with spirits. It was so bad she couldn't keep it in the house. She left her comfort zone seeking Jesus. She had heard Jesus was a deliverer and she went to him. You can't wait on God. Sometimes you got to go after because faith without works is what? You don't move your feet, but you're praying for a breakthrough. You're praying for doors to open, but you won't get your hand off the doorknob. You're allowing a season in your life to define your whole lifetime. Just because you've walked through a divorce does not mean your life is over. You're going to make it just like you did before. You're going to make it. You can make it when your child is strung out on drugs. You're going to make it because this is part of your testimony. And before you were ever even formed in your mother's womb, God knew that you were going to walk through the exact season that you're in right now. He knew that you were going to create the storms that you're having to walk through the consequences for right now. And he said, I've given you everything you need to make it through. I've given you the grace to make it through. I've given you the peace to make it through. You can play with me, man. I feel a playing in my spirit. You can't wait on God. You got to go after it. Some of y'all have been in the same position for a whole year. I'm waiting on God. No, God is waiting on you. I'm waiting on God. No, God's waiting on you, baby. And God is saying the dripping anointing that's on your life, you are slippery with anointing because you made it through some stuff that should have taken somebody else out. And now you are slippery. People put labels on you and you ain't got to fight the labels. Some things are going to slip right off of you. Because you're oily now. I hate it that we got to go through stuff in life. I hate it. But there ain't nothing in this world to make you more powerful than making it through something. That everybody's been watching you make it through. They, he would have taken them out, but not you. Your praise has gotten louder. Your voice has gotten louder. Your, whole, your, your faith has gotten stronger. Because, honey, you realize, oh, my gosh, I am still here. Look at me making it without that person I thought would take me out. Look at me making it without my car. These Uber drivers are chauffeuring me around like driving Miss Daisy. Look at me making it. You finally get to that place where you're like, God, whatever it takes. When I walked through my divorce in 2006, I had gone through 10 years of hell. I should have left a long time ago, but I was trying to prove Pastor Rod Parsley wrong. When he said, you married this boy, you're going, you're going to jump into the fire. I was like, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not going to, that's not true. I'm just not going to own that word. You know how some of us are. I don't claim it. It didn't take until a place where I was hiding in a bush running for my life. My ex-husband was an alcoholic and every time he got drunk, he would almost beat the tar out of me. And I kept staying. Glad it ain't this season of my life because you hear me, I'd have taken my shoes off and my earrings off and I'd have been laying hands on him. Understand what I'm saying? But God knew that I had to walk through that season because in that season when I had nobody, because when you're going through something like this Canaanite woman, you don't have many people hanging around you because people don't really like to be bothered with your problems. 
This is why you got to know how to chase after Jesus when all hell's breaking loose. Because all those people you've been talking to about the same thing, you've been going around the same mountain over and over. And people are ready for you to get up and walk away from the mess that you're in. Stop telling everybody all your business, especially if they can't do nothing for you. You're over here getting counseling from people that ain't never walked through one thing you're walking through. You know what they're doing to you? They're making you stay in park. You ain't going nowhere because they ain't got no wise advice for you. No, I want somebody in my life. I don't need to hang around with people that ain't got limp. I need to see you limping, okay? I need to see that you made it through something. I need to see that you're not over here professing to be a perfect Christian, but instead you're telling your business out there to help somebody else know, I can make it, you can make it, I can make it. And Jesus went out thence and withdrew. We could go home. There's a hill. I'm telling you some People already gotten their breakthrough. But I feel it. My insides. You know how I always feel when God's doing something? I feel like my heart's about to pop out of my chest, man. I, I almost could hoop. And I'm not a hooper. But I, I almost could hoop. I'm going to be like Pastor Mark over here. And I'm going to hoop during the sermon. I mean, during the offering. I feel like I get to that place where... The anointing is happening and you want to grab it. That's what happens. This is why you walk into this place. You don't come just to mess up your, to, to wear cute dresses and cute shoes. No, you walk up into this place so you can hijack somebody's faith. You, you walk up in this place so you can see some people making it through and trusting God and trusting and understanding that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon. Matthew 15, 21, 28, and Jesus went out hence, thence, and withdrew into the parts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a, Can a Canaanite woman came out from those borders and cried, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the demon. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered and said, It is not meat, it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. But she said, Yeah, Lord, for even the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O oh woman, great is thy faith. Great is thy faith. Be it done unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was healed that hour. How bad do you want it? Look at your neighbor and say, how bad do you want it? You better be obedient and ask them, how bad do you want it? How, how bad do you want it? Have you ever had a problem that was so huge you felt like you couldn't go on? High blood pressure, high cholesterol, getting up in the middle of the night with anxiety attacks, feeling like your mouth and your body is closing down on you when all it is is you're not renewing your mind. You're not understanding that when you realize the power that you possess is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of you. And when you begin to dig deep, dig deep, baby, dig right here and begin to let a roar. The reason I make your roar crying here is because when you open your mouth, I, sometimes you ain't got a prayer. I need the oh, I need the oh, you can do is open your mouth and begin to call on Jesus. Ain't got a prayer. Ever had a problem so big it pushed you out of the house? You ever had a problem in your marriage and all of a sudden it got messy? All of a sudden it was out of your house. That was where this woman found herself. She found herself having to leave because her child was so eaten up 
with demons, so vexed that she had to get out of her house and go after it. See, the problem is we sit whenever something happens, the enemy can't touch you, but where he gets you is in paralyzation. He paralyzes you with fear. All of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I've lost everything. And now I got to start all over again. And I'm scared to move because all I got left is a little bit of crumbs and I'm scared to move. I might lose all that too. So I just stay frozen out of fear. Fear will paralyze you. Especially when you've made a few bad business moves and you got this dream on the inside of you and you're scared to move on that dream because the enemy knows that in 2018 you were going to walk up in the church of the Harvest Fayetteville and a light was going to be lit in your tummy and you were going to get fearless and you were going to realize the only thing that can happen to me is I lose it again but I will still get up again I have never met one person that's made it and succeeded that has not failed numerous times before they succeeded the difference was they got back up again after they failed I have fallen at least 20,000 times in my life and look at God if he can do it for me in five years he can do it for you when God comes on the scene it doesn't matter if you're child is vexed it doesn't matter if your marriage is vexed it doesn't matter if your finances are gone when God comes on the scene he turns the lights on in your life and begins to give you back restitution five years five years five years five years ago I was working at Bloomingdale's five years living in my mom and daddy's 10 by 10 bedroom With my two little boys, five years, driving a car that kept me on the side of the road every day, five years ago. What's happened in the last five years? He's opened the windows of heaven over my life, and I'm preaching with the generals. I'm preaching with people that got me whooped in preaching. I'm preaching with people that have been preaching for 50,000 years, and here I am, five years. In five years, I got up and wrote three books, and they all went bestseller. In five years, I'm driving my dream car. Right now, in five years, I bought a house. Five years. You know why I changed in five years? Because I got my mind wrapped around the fact I ain't quitting. I don't care if I got to chase after God. I I don't care if I got to begin to just every night, every day, chase after him. I'm going to do it until he gets tired of me. And finally says, because of your faith, you are made whole. And I'm opening the windows of heaven over your life because you didn't quit. Ah, she was desperate. I got desperate. I would lay in that bed saying, God, I need you to take this pain away from me. And he talked to me like I talked to y'all. He was real talk Jesus. And he would say, Kimberly, I can't take the pain away from you. You got to get up and walk away from it. You got to stop concentrating on what's gone. And you got to begin to praise me for what's about to come. Because nothing that walked out of your life is greater than what's about to come in your life. And what would normally take 12 years is going to take two years. What would take two years is going to make one year. I'm telling you, he is speeding up time in your life. If you go to Church of the Harvest Fayetteville, what's on my life is stripping off of me on you. And you can't help but be blessed. This is the year where we buy houses and don't rent this is the year of good credit this is the year where you got 250 credit score and now you're about to go up to 793 this is a year where debt consolidation on medical bills. This is a year where God begins to fix your name. This is a year where God begins to give you exceedingly, abundantly, more than you could ever ask or think. This is the year where favor is chasing you down. This is the year where you got some foolish favor and all your friends get blessed because they're your friends. You're a favor magnet. All your friends going to be blessed just because they're friends with you. You watch. I'm not up here just giving you some cliches. I'm telling you, I believe what I preach. You know why? Because you can't fake passion. You know why you can't fake passion? Because you get fa- a passion from walking through storms and dancing in the puddles. You get passion and empathy because you went through something and God's trusting you to go through it because he knows you're going to keep chasing after him. And then he's going to give you people just like you that you can pull out of hell. You got to be radical on saying whatever it takes. 
I'm coming after it. I'm coming after it. When I finally got sick and tired of being sick and tired, I remember the night just like it was yesterday. I was laying up in my mom and daddy's at my, my, my old house. And I was laying up there and all of a sudden, something came over me and I got so mad at the devil. I said, devil, I'm about to take it back tonight. And I said, God, I'm about to turn everything over to you in my life. I'm going to give you my heart posture. I'm going to give you everything. And you got eight hours to fix me. So you better get busy. My son's going to need some oatmeal at eight o'clock in the morning. First time in my life. I went after it. And within eight hours, I walked out of that bedroom tired because I had cried so hard. God had just ripped things out of me that I had been holding on to that was not of him. He began to let it go. He began to let it go out of my life. It was just like me. I was chasing after him just like that Canaanite woman. I and in a season for five years and I'd heard not a word not a word I was waiting on God to say Kimberly go this way I didn't hear not a word but that night I heard a lot of words and he said by in the morning when you get up you're going to walk out of here and those spiritual cataracts that you've had on your the worldly cataracts is almost like, like my eyes had been fogged with all the stuff that I had gone through I was be just beaten down inside he said I'm about to do it very quickly you've been in a caterpillar position but I'm about to bring you out a beautiful butterfly when you walk out of this room tomorrow nobody's going to even recognize you you ain't going to lay in your bed depressed another day your children are going to get their mama back and you're going to walk into that work and I'm going to begin to elevate you from Belt to Bloomingdale's and then from Bloomingdale's I'm going to give you a, a manager position. Oh, this special ed girl, you know what? I went after him. Some of you just need to know how to go after him. Some of you need to know how to open your mouth even when you can't see or hear and keep talking over and over and over. See, that's the problem. We come into church. We get, everybody lays their hands on you. You've been, so many people laid hands on you. And you ain't changed nothing. You've had prophetic words. Where they at? Because God can give it to you. But if you don't know how to implement it, you can mess up on what God's called you to do. When I was walking in those seasons, God, I kept asking God, even when God opened the windows of heaven for me to start preaching, he said, you still ain't ready. Because listen, do not get weary in well-doing for in due season. You shall reap if you faint not. In those seasons, he said, I'm about to give you a job at Bloomingdale's, driving one hour going and one hour coming home, and I want you to get Bible school. I'm giving you a chance to get preaching in your spirit, and then I want you to learn how to prophesy. I want you to learn how to pray the heavens down in that car. If I would not have done that for another two years, when he opened the windows of heaven over my life, I would have flopped flat on my my face and guess what when you don't prepare for what God's taking you to he is not he does not have to give you a do-over if you're in a season of silence just like that lady the Canaanite woman before you get out of this room today you better learn to lay hands on yourself because at 3 o'clock, some of you have been walking around pitiful and depressed. Your face is so long and you're miserable. You ain't got no, nobody wants to be around you. Because everybody really wants you to make it. And you just ain't pushing through to make it. So you're just allowing yourself to stay stuck in a season that you can't stand. Oh, you can give up. Giving up is your option. But giving up also makes you stay in that season that you wish to God you were out of. No, you got to learn how, even if you are literally dragging your leg, honey. You got to know how to keep moving. Get around some people. Push you to break through and not break down. You got to go out of your way. If you want healing, you got to go out of your way. If you want to touch from God, you got to go out of your way. If you want a job, you got to go out of your way. We'll lay on the couch waiting for a breakthrough, scratching our behind. Waiting for a breakthrough. Devil's after my job. No. You ain't putting no resumes in. You're always late for work. Devil's after my car. No, you need an oil change. If everything in your life keeps messing up, it's you, boo. Okay? If everybody hates you, it's you're the common denominator. 
Just trying to help you get it together so you ain't got to keep going down this mountain over and over again. How, what are you going to do when you go silent? What are you going to do? What are you going to do when God puts you on hold? You're going to check your posture. Check your posture. Are you getting on Facebook every day telling the whole world? Nobody cares. Are you getting on Facebook and prophesying a place that you want to be? When God started building my, in my, my media, social media platforms, I know everybody thought I was sitting up in a penthouse up on downtown Atlanta. They would have died if they would have known I was sitting in my mom and daddy's house. Lost everything. But my little Twitter fingers was prophesying every day. I prophesied today is a turnaround in my favor. I prophesied today. is that It wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. He was silent. He wasn't giving me a word, but I kept on prophesying until I believed it. I kept prophesying depression off of my life that I got so free, I would walk up in the Bloomingdale's and I'd just be touching everybody with my head. <laughs> I was like, oh, if they touch me, they're going to get healed. <laughs> Because I was feeling the shackles. See, see, I was helping God help me. I was beginning to get around people that were, that were pushing me to breakthroughs and not that breakdowns. I, I was getting in. I'd come into the house of God. I would get everything I could. I would be up front shouting, man. What? You got to check your posture. The next thing you got to do, live out your responsibility. When God... Goes silent. While waiting on God, you still must live out your responsibility. It can be discouraging to put, be put on hold by God. And some of us give up on our, uh, on our other duties because of that. We give up on getting ourselves better. Because where we're staying ain't where we're staying. So we just start getting prepared for whatever God's about to do in our life. Because he says in Ephesians 3.20, he's going to do exceedingly abundantly more than we could ever ask or think. I want to be prepared for it. Husbands, I know that you keep praying for your wife to change. But while you're on hold, you still got to carry out your responsibility to love, support, and push your wives. I know that you, you're praying for your husband to change. But just because he ain't changed yet don't mean you're going to throw him away. You got to still have your responsibility. You still got to go to work until he allows you to go full-time ministry. You still got to go to work and every day of your life walk in that place early, not late. Don't steal time on the time clock because you're getting prepared. I made myself so, so indispensable at Bloomingdale's that when I left, they still call me to this day and it's been five years. I learned how to run the whole store because I knew one day I'm going to be somewhere and they're all going to be watching me. And I don't want those people to be like, well, I knew her when she was at Bloomingdale's and she was, I, 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 I. no, I wanted them to see God's elevate me and one day you're going to be following me. And I want to make sure that everything you know about me, you remember I was there the same as I am today. And I was preaching there just like I do here. You watch me go from nay naying on the bar to pray praying in the office. And while waiting and continuing to live up to your responsibilities, what do you got to do? You got to keep talking to God. You got to keep talking to God. He wants your persistence. According to the Bible, a judge ruled in a widow's favor because of her persistence. Yet because this widow bothers, uh, yet, yet because this widow bothers me, I will give her legal protection. Lest by continually coming, she, wear, she is wearing me out. And the Lord said, hear what the unrighteous judge said. Now shall, not bring, now, now shall not God bring about justice for his elect who cry to him day and night, and he will delay long over them. I tell you that he will bring about justice for them speedily. Luke 18 and 5 through 8. The Canaanite woman won because of her persistence. God wants our persistence. Being persistent will not change God's mind, but it will filter and cleanse our, mode, our motivations so that they will be the right ones when we pray. We do not realize that our prayers affect others, but God does. He sometimes will not answer them immediately because of how it will affect someone else at that time. 
God wants us to keep praying and asking him, though, so that our motivation becomes clear and right. And then you must wait and trust that my ladder shall be greater. That God is working it out behind the scenes even when I can't feel him. He is working more. Usually when you don't hear God in those, high, those quiet seasons, he's working harder for you than you even think he's working for you. He's just, listen, the teacher is always silent during the test. And then you got to have faith. you got to have so much faith that just like that Canaanite woman, you can play with me, Ralphie. The piano, you bad. I love you, Ralph. Sometimes when you can't hear God, I remember I used to lay in my bed. I couldn't hear him. I was like, God. Everybody in my family is walking in their calling and I just can't quit messing up. And I would lay in that bed at night and I didn't have a prayer. My tongue felt like a turtle stuck in peanut butter. I couldn't even open my mouth hardly. Despair. Expectations are the root of all evil because... When we expect something to go a certain way and it doesn't go the way that we expected, man, I didn't expect to be 36 back at my mom and dad's after 17 years. I thought I'd be a little white picket fence with Fabio. One boy and one girl. That expectation started at me. I thought what I was staring at was going to be all I'd ever have. And nothing changed until I began to change the way I looked at my situation. I had to begin to realize that God knows exactly where I am. And sometimes he doesn't change your situation because he's trying to, that, he wants that situation to change you. So you won't keep repeating the same cycles over and over. Depression. Get up and walk away from it. Well, all my whole family's got it. It's just in my DNA. You have the power to break generational curses off of you. God is not a God of chaos and confusion. He sometimes doesn't give you a word when you want him to give you a word. But I can promise you, as long as you keep opening your mouth and worshiping him, he's going to come through. It might not be, listen, it, your rent might be due on the 5th and on the 4th, you still ain't got it. But you're going to still praise your way out. You're going to still say, God, I know that you've got me covered. I would lay in that bed at night. I didn't have a prayer, but I knew I had to open my mouth because I can pray over you all day long, but if you ain't praying over yourself, nothing's going to change. You come get your, your head laid hands on every Sunday, and it's still the same. You know why? Because you don't believe you're worthy of a miracle. The devil's cut you defeated, and shame is taking you out. Shame is the biggest culprit. Because it will allow us, it will keep us holding on to deprivation and pain. And we'll begin to think God hates us and we're just getting our just due reward. But my God said that once you come to know me, all old things have passed away. And I've made things new in your life. And what karma was supposed to give you, grace steps in and takes its place. Stand up on your feet. That Canaanite woman was a misfit she even told God I'll take the crumbs off the table because if you get the crumbs them things can grow what are you willing to go after I will lay in that bed 2006 no prayer 
And I would just say, I need, need the oh, I need thee every hour. I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come. Some of you just need to lay hands on your heart this morning because God's loosening some things in your life. And by the time you walk over the threshold of this building, you're going to have breakthrough and freedom. You're going to feel refreshed. Your mind is going to be clear. I come against right now all confusion. I come against all confusion. I come against anxiety attacks. I come against sickness. You shall live and not die. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. I need you to open your mouth and pray over yourself right now. God, I receive it. Come on and tell him, God, I receive it. I receive your power. I receive your strength. I receive your anointing. I receive my breakthrough. I accept my breakthrough. And God, I give you permission to wreck me. I give you permission to surprise me this week. I give you permission to give me foolish faith and foolish favor. God's going to bring some jobs into your life this week. Some of you have been looking for a job. God's going to bring it in your life. Somebody's going to get a good doctor's report this week. Somebody's kid's coming home. That prodigal child is coming home. Somebody's marriage is being healed in this place right now. Somebody's marriage, whatever you need, just reach up and grab it. Just reach up and grab it. God knows your need like nobody else. Just grab it. Grab the peace. Grab your breakthrough, baby. If you're in this place and you don't know who Jesus is, you got to know who Jesus is. Let me tell you why. Because he comes and lives inside of you. Whenever you accept him into your heart, then you got the same power that raised Jesus from the dead living on the inside of you. Is that not exciting? That's why you can't walk around in pieces when he's giving you peace. Because all you got to do is know how to lay hands on yourself. That's why I love to sing prophetic songs in here. Waymaker, miracle worker. Pro- you know why? Because I'm prophesying mountain moving power. So if you don't know who Jesus is, I want you to lift up your hand. I'm going to walk you through the sinner's prayer. And then God's going to live on the inside of you. And guess what? I see you. I see you. Then you're going to be able to lay hands on yourself. Lift your hands high. Who cares who sees you? If you want, if you want the Holy Ghost, I'm about to give you the Holy Ghost. How many people in here speak in tongues? Anybody in here speaking your heavenly language? Anybody in here do that? That's important because it's a language that the devil can't understand. <laughs> so when you start speaking in tongues, you don't have to make it hard. You just start speaking. You just start speaking. Scared to death of you. All of you that lifted. In fact, everybody, just repeat after me. Father, I receive your power. I give you my life to make residency in my spirit. To make residency in my life. Lord, I give you permission to use me all over the world. Father, forgive me for getting in your way. And Lord, I say, have your way in my life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Now, what I want you to do is we leave this place. We will see you on Wednesday night. I want you at the top of your lungs to give a roar, something right here. Whenever you give a roar cry, when you give a roar cry, all of a sudden you're loosening some things in the spirit. Are y'all ready? Some of y'all been grown for a long time. You need to right now envision whatever you are letting go of or whoever you're praying for in the spirit. And at the top of your lungs, I want you right now, everybody in Fayetteville, Georgia, to hear Church of the Harvest Fayetteville got some people set free today. Are y'all ready? One, two, three. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Freedom. 
Feels good, don't it? Feels good, don't it? Feels good, don't it? Let's do it one more time. Let's do it one more time. Y'all make my insides vibrate. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? One, two, three. Y'all go have the best week.